sort of creative form and 
and then uh, see what that meant to us and express that. I think it could come from anything, but um, I think like was it expressed in the beginning that based on serious true events, it, it sort of puts you into a um, uh, trying to express something meaningful and uh, you know, try and address an issue that is important to what's going on today. Uh, so do you feel restricted uh, when you were asked to write uh, in a certain time frame that you have to deliver? Uh, though that's not what the intention is here. Of course, this is just an experimental introductory workshop, but you can always use this technique at your home, in your own time, or from what you can watch a movie and write two days later. But uh, since we were working in a festival, and those movies would not have been shown later sometime, and you might miss out on that, and then also when something is raw and fresh, we wanted to see your immediate reaction. So did you see um, it more, uh, it was more appealing to you, or it was kind of a turn off by saying, hey, I'm just putting a time frame here, I have to deliver something in very strict. Uh, no more like panic at the beginning. <laughs> it's like, oh no, how is this ever going to happen? But I think the the real gift was that when something did come out that I was pleased with, I thought, oh, well, that's you know, that's really great. That it seemed like it came as a result in part from the time restriction. So uh, it was really a great experience to see that when there is a time limit that um, sometimes, you know, the yes. universe will start. Right. Um, we will come back to you, Steve, asking the second round of questions. Uh, I want to ask almost the same question now to David and his experiences. And if David, you forget any of the questions that I asked to Steve, please uh, remind me. I'll be happy to repeat. Thank you, Carl, so much for everything you're doing to bring uh, an opportunity to, to poets of all shapes and sizes here in Orange County. Thank you so much. And, you know, meeting Steve here tonight you know, and hearing his comments just kind of galvanizes how I feel about it. And thank you for sharing your thoughts too, Steve, because I, now I feel like there's a brotherhood here between you and I. And so you hearing your words were inspiring because it really was a, like a fountainhead of ideas. And you asked about reality versus fiction. You know, I think Steve could write a poem about Star Wars, but he would have to, in some ways, deal with parody versus what we dealt with, which, which was reality, you know, in its gritty, graphic form. So I think the, the end product, I mean, I'm sure if Steve, it was, if, if you assigned us, we could write uh, about a masonry wall in the desert. But if you give us something that's compelling, like your film festival, which is a, a smorgasbord of ideas and reality and, you know, global reach, that you're going to get more of the poet, um, and more of the prose, because there, it's just so, it, there's so much richness. You know, I'm sure that, I mean, Steve probably did the same thing, where um, I was scribbling in the dark, watching Alex and Ali, and that was the movie that I was partially assigned, but I, I, I think I would have written about it, no matter, because it was so deep. But that's not really poetry. Uh, maybe it's beat poetry, but just to regurgitate ideas, you know, comments that that I could that was not presentable, in my opinion. Um, so those ideas were there, but to actually mold it and sculpt it into prose, you know, is a different matter. I think that's the next step because I think everybody writes. I mean, I'm a, I'm a natural scientist and a geologist. I write every day, and sometimes it's flowery and poetic, uh, but not so much in the technical world. Um, so the time constraint is huge. Don't change it because no. <laughs> you have a blueprint, right, Steve? I mean, yeah. he's not his head because there it was go time. There's no putting it off. It, and what it forces the the, uh, the writer to do is to complete, to finish. Right? I mean, there's a lot of paintings that aren't finished. There's a lot of ideas that you know don't become concrete and, and, and well formed. So by having that timeline getting something that's fresh, right, and forcing uh, completion. Yeah.
think this is time for uh, me to make a phone call to Jennifer Reese. Jennifer, I hope you're having a marvelous day and I love your poetry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, happy birthday, Jennifer. This is Steve Sasaki. Yes, happy Hi. birthday. Thank you, Steve. Happy birthday.
Any other thoughts you would want to share, maybe with Jennifer, or if you want to add something, Steve, before we let Jennifer go? Uh, I don't think so, no. Oh, wow. I think it's a pleasure to talk to you on the phone. Same. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for everything. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, and you'll have a good night. Good night. That was great. Um, speaking of the technique, as you have heard Jennifer talking about techniques, um, yeah. would you like to share what technique do you use for writing the poems you shared with us? I, I think the most important thing, especially given the time constraint, was trying to find a way in. So uh, I guess that's the best way I could put it, just trying to see the film or experience the film and then see what struck me and uh, you know whether it was a character or an idea or i did three so it was a little different experience with each one so tell me which one which was uh, which one was uh, when you felt that you were a character uh, I think more so, uh, not so much the character directly, but the story of M. Uh, I guess what got me into uh, what I was writing was, um, I wondered what happened, you know, what, what the rest of her story, what her backstory was, and what happened after. And I thought, oh, well, that's interesting to me. And so I wanted to participate in the film in that way and sort of um, completing the story or, or rounding out or, or talking uh, more about uh, imagining the rest of the story or different parts of the story. So that was uh, what I ended up writing about. And, uh, and, and the second uh, poem that you wrote, um, on, that was on Morning Park. Yes. Okay. I was more curious why did you choose uh, to write about someone else rather than the characters uh, in the movie itself? Did it like, uh, I assume uh, the movie might have triggered a memory in you and you wrote about someone else. Can you tell me your experience? How, how did you juggle with that idea to talk about someone completely different who was not a part of the film? Yes, uh, for the boiling pot, I think uh, since the theme was racism, that um, that struck some ideas that I think I had in me, and uh, you know, just uh, views about racism, and so um, I think for that one, having. It, it sort of uh, ignited some some thoughts in me and uh, views that I had, and then um, I was trying to think of well, what characters would express that. So um, the the characters in the poem, or the character in the poem, came to me, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. That if such, you know, that subject and what the film addressed, um, then thinking about, well, what's the answer to that? You know, what, what would improve um, that situation? And so that, that was part of where I took off from there. Um, Steve, would you like to share a, any other thoughts uh, regarding the workshop, your experiences, or any suggestions that you would like to make to improve the workshop? Um, I think you just deserve more help. Exactly. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, I, I I thought it was great, and you know, just really appreciate all the work that you put in. So I just think it's like a monumental task, and I don't see how you are able to do everything that you did. So um, I thought it's it's inspiring the dedication that you show and the, the work that you put in. So. I just felt bad that I thought there should be two or three of you, and then maybe it'd be more manageable. 
Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. And um, as much I, I am, or like we all are tempted to take credits for everything that we do, I must acknowledge that uh, even though it seems like I'm doing um, everything, uh, trust me, there are many people behind the scene. As you can see right now, we are three people talking, but there are seven, eight people there working to cover this thing. Uh, I really am thankful for all the volunteers and um, the people who have come forward to lend their support. Um, Athena, all the way back in Australia, our general secretary, uh, who is an invisible champion of our cause and her support. We are looking for people who believe in our vision and once they join us, they help us grow. Uh, so this is an open invitation to everyone, even including you and David, to come and join if you do believe uh, in what we are doing and uh, uh, that would be great because uh, of course uh, everything that has started in this world uh, at one point was started by one person. And so I truly believe uh, that help will come sooner or later. So I'm keeping my finger crossed and I'm staying hopeful that everybody is spreading good word about the festival as you saw in actually in a daily pilot. Uh, if uh, you all are uh, taking a note of this, please take a picture of this. This appeared in, in daily pilot and Los Angeles time we are thankful for covering this news. I also want to uh, thank um, uh, Orange County List, uh, which they have a full page coverage, uh, which uh, unfortunately I can bring it here today. Then this uh, our workshop uh, was also featured in Los Angeles Times, uh, main Los Angeles Times. So I thank all our media supporters and sponsors. Um, we have extensively talked about our festival and art of cinema workshop at KPFB Radio, LA18. Um, and numerous other uh, magazines, the examiner, a um, lot of things for us to share and that we do to maybe even we join next. So thank you very much for making this great suggestions and your appreciation very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, now David, uh, coming back to you, uh, please share your thoughts on the techniques used. Yeah, once again, uh, I do want to shine the light on the call your titles and the work you've done is amazing and it's it's a it you know we should underscore that it is a non-profit organization and so all, all donations are welcome it's a it's a tax write-off a dollar for dollar and uh it's right now it's uh, obviously it's more than grassroots you know we there was a academy award winner Lou Gossett Jr. was was present, uh, and for Steve and I to read poetry in his audience is that's considered a rarefied air, and that's right there. It's a pinch me moment, and so uh, you know I think uh, the Cannes uh, Can Film Festival was not Cannes Film Festival right away. Maybe Sundance came in hot because Robert Redford is backing it, but Park City was not Park City right out of the out of the box. Uh, so there is a process, and uh, so we were hoping that. Uh, you keep your good work and, and keep fighting the, the good fight uh, because it is important work and you, you bring an opportunity for poets uh, in, you know, beyond just the corner uh, coffee house you know it's it's pretty splendid i i, I do remember that in, in lit uh, back in college sometimes we would write about a movie but it wasn't prose it was not a poetry assignment it was a review like cisco and neighbor so this is a completely different approach and it's unique and uh, so you should be very proud, and, and the volunteers were awesome. Um, but as far as my process of um, the, um, the poetry, or the, the assignment, um, it's funny, I didn't really realize until just a moment ago when you were talking about how we are looking for human connection when we're writing as an observer or if we immerse ourselves, like in my case, I took the character of Ali. Um, and I, the reason, one of the reasons why I chose that route, and there's many routes to go, um, was because I felt like it would, there's, it would provide a little bit of balance in the universe because the movie is is directed uh, and edited uh, by Alex um, and his family member. Um, uh, his name is uh, Malik, Maliki Leopold? Uh, Malachi Leopold. Malachi Leopold. And they did a great, uh, awesome work. 
it was very honest and it was very revealing, warts and all. However, it wasn't Ali's voice. Um, he, although he's depicted in it, uh, I, I felt like it was only natural for me to take on his character to complete my interpretation of the story you know, from his uh, point of view. Um, and as we're sitting here, like there's just a flash in the movie where it talks about <clears throat> where Ollie's mentioned that he had 15 bones fractured in one of his legs alone during the torturing process um, when he was uh, stripped of his freedom and uh, you know beaten down. And, and that's been one of the opening lines of my the opening stanza. I mentioned the 15 bones snapping. And just tonight, I realized that well, I had a really really bad. Uh, crash in my bicycle. I used to race bicycles. And this happened about uh, a couple years ago. And I am now realizing that part of the, the topic of, of suffrage, you know, and maybe it's not some level of martyrdom, uh, is coming from myself, you know, because I know what it is, you know, we all have pain. But I think on some level, I, was, I remember writing in pain because it was a near-death experience. And I'm now realizing, I think, right now, that on some level, that's probably why I took that path. And, but it wasn't conscious, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm gonna, I relate to this man because I had a near-death experience. I'm realizing that right now, that's probably uh, on some id level, you know, on some Freudian level, that's probably why I latched onto the 15th bone, snapping, you know, and fracturing, and the, the, how, how he's uh, discarded, but it makes a comeback on some level. <clears throat> uh, so, in, in, as far as my process, it was, uh, writing, scribbling, regurgitating, and then, bless you, but I was working until two or three in the morning at night, you know, right? and I was like, I've got to get this thing right, and honed down, and pared down, and pruned, and it still is, you know, a little long-winded, but, uh, but you know, that was part of my process, was writing one long poem, and hopefully I'd be off the hook for the second and third, <laughs> so that's kind of how it worked. That, that film was great, and how you guys submitted everything in time. So, uh, can you please uh, share uh, who, which persona did you take uh, for, to you, uh, what technique did you use for writing these poems? Well, that's interesting because you know, I was, uh, I lashed on when Jennifer mentioned that she, in one of her works of poems, she wrote uh, of, uh, regarding the movie Rainy Season and also the uh, story of M. Then in one she chose to immerse herself as a character, in another one she chose to be a fly on the wall observer. And I think I started writing, honestly, uh, innocently, as an observer. My work was, was intended to be a third party. And, for, and I took this, so suddenly I became, uh, I became immersed in, in Ali's character. And I really don't know how it happened. I'm not even sure what that process was. That's what art is. You know, it was, a, it was my God, now suddenly I'm, my voice is all eight. Do you guys want to share anything else before we conclude this workshop today? I'll go first and then Steve. Okay. Once again, thanks for everything. And when I go into the recording studio, I try to write poems. And that's, you know, as a songwriter, I, in some way, it, I'm trying to put together a movie in three minutes. And so I, I'm going to take with me the Silent River Film Festival. Next time I go into the recording studio, which will be very soon, I'm going to put down some lyrics that are inspired uh, by my experiences here. So I'm, I, what I'm doing also is bringing in my ideas to is to introduce some of my music. Uh, we just released a record called Dos Gatos. Um, Dos Gatos is number one on ReverbNation.com. It's available on iTunes and Spotify and Amazon. This is a record uh, that myself and my friend Eric put out recently. But this is this is a perfect example of uh, the different layers of art. I mean, all coming together in music, yeah. writing, poetry, uh, and, and, and cinema. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jamie. Um, yes, uh, same thing. I just want to thank you for this opportunity. I mean, it's a great opportunity. I think anytime uh, somebody, a writer, wants to, is given the opportunity to write something and share it with people, I mean, it's, it's really great. And I think the idea of, uh, one thought I had as far as the films is that there's not that many mediums where you come together and watch something together. So I think there is something to uh, sharing the experience and, you know, that adds to, uh, gives a little different dimension to some of the other art forms. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve. 
Uh, this is the magazine uh, Life and Lessons, in which we will be publishing uh, all the poems written by our writers in this workshop. I also wanted to share uh, this wonderful art. I want to recognize one of my uh, artist friend, Dean Pash, uh, who created this beautiful artwork. Uh, I, all these pictures that you see here, uh, in this, I think most of them, except the one on the bottom, is, is created by Dean, uh, who is in Germany himself, a wonderful uh, painter and a poet. Uh, Dean, thank you so much for adding so much beauty to our magazine. Uh, we love you and thank you everyone who has supported the Silent River Film Festival. Uh, my heartfelt thanks to all of you.